Interference is one explanation for forgetting. It says that one memory disrupts the ability to recall another. And this is most likely to occur when the two memories are similar. For example, if you're on holiday in Germany and you're trying to remember German for two, your knowledge of French that you've learned previously may interfere with trying to remember the German. There are two types of interference, retroactive and proactive interference. Retroactive interference occurs when newer information interferes with trying to remember something in the past. For example, if you're learning about attachment, it may interfere with your memory for social psychology, if you've learnt that previously. Proactive interference is when old information interferes with newer learning. For example, you might have moved your keys to a different drawer, but you go back to the old drawer to find your keys. The old information is interfering with the newer information in this instance. It can be easy to get mixed up between proactive and retroactive interference. So try and think of retro as meaning past. So retroactive interference relates to remembering stuff in the past. Pro can be equated to going forwards. So proactive interference relates to remembering newer stuff. So just to clarify, retroactive interference is when you're trying to remember information in the past, but newer information interferes with it. And proactive interference is when you're trying to remember something new, but old information interferes with it. So what evidence is there for interference? Muller and Pulzeka in 1900 found evidence for retroactive interference. So what did Muller and Pulzeka do exactly? They asked participants to learn a list of syllables for six minutes. If participants looked at some landscape paintings before recalling the syllables, they had worse recall. And so this shows retroactive interference. The newer information of the landscape paintings interfered with trying to remember the old information, the syllables. There is also evidence for proactive interference. Underwood 1957 analysed a number of studies that used word lists in order to investigate proactive interference. Underwood found that if participants had to remember 10 or more lists of words, then after 24 hours, recall was much worse than if they had to remember only one list. So why is this evidence for proactive interference? It shows proactive interference because each previous list interfered with the learning of a new list. The past learning interfered with trying to remember newer information. A problem with research into interference is that most of it is laboratory based and artificial, so it has low ecological validity. However, there is one study which does have high ecological validity, and that was carried out by Badley and Hitch, and it involved rugby players. They found that the rugby players who had played more matches found it harder to remember the names of the teams they played, so showing interference. But another problem with interference is that it only explains some instances of forgetting. The material has to be quite similar for interference to occur. So retrieval failure, which is another explanation of forgetting, may be better able to explain forgetting in more situations.